Hey friends, it's Allie with AllieOops.com and MarketHouseDIY.com and I am so happy you found this video. We're going to be great friends. If you stumbled upon our video, we are a lifestyle brand. We do DIYs, we do fashion try-ons and tips and trends. We just have a lot of fun dabbling in things that add value and fun to our lives. So I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll subscribe to our channel. You never know what we're going to post. But today's video is on blending paint. And I am using Dixie Belle paint today to, to create a really cute watermelon door sign. So we're just going to talk about the very basics of blending paint. I have a lot of questions about it. We teach a workshop in our studio about it, and I just wanted to share some very simple basic things. So I hope you'll keep watching and see what fun thing we do. Okay, so today we are going to use our Dixie Belle paints, and we are going to blend and I think what we're going to do on this door sign is make a blended watermelon half. So let's just jump in. Now when you're blending you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a mister and I happen to love this Water Girl by Paint Pixie. It's really great. Dixie Belle also makes a mister. You're going to need your paint colors. So you can use all the actual colors or you can remove these, use your two primary colors and, or not primary, green's not a primary, use your two main colors and then just blend with white. So I guess I can show you today how to do that with both, both ways, um, but we're going to do this watermelon. And this is a cute door hanger sign that I have this hello then I'm going to paint and adhere to it, and then we'll have the watermelon on the bottom. So let's just start with blending. When I did mine, I started the little sample. I started with the green on the outside, then I did the lighter green, your pinks, and your reds. Um, you could go the opposite direction if you want. Really doesn't matter. What you do need are brushes for each and every paint color. So let me find some brushes, um, which we could use our same brush with our red, or our pinks, and one for the greens if we want. Let me get some white over here to show you that method. So let me just show you that to start. And let's see really need a couple more brushes but looks like all I've got is some angle here's another one my brushes are worn out guys they are tired oh here's another one there we go all right so we got our mister we got our paint assortment I've already put a base coat where my watermelon will be just so that it's not raw wood and then I painted my top um, this really pretty I believe it's mermaid tail but I'll also put that in the comment in the description so that you know but we're gonna let's start first and do we'll do half of it with blending with white how about that so on the outside um, and I'm gonna turn it around a bit. going to take my brush and I'm going to go ahead when you're blending especially on furniture you want to or any project really you want to mist your base piece whatever you're painting and get some water down on it and then you want to go ahead and get that dark green on there. All right. And of course, if you want to paint the edges, that'll make it look like a more finished project. I got probably a little more water than I need, but we'll go from there. All right. 
So now I'm going to take some white and just blend in that white. So that gives that lighter green look without using an additional paint. So then I'll take my, you're actually just using your white, and I'll take a dark green again. And then I'm just working that paint and I got my one with my white and just blending that paint for your watermelon rind. Now this is kind of artsy, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want to keep that darker green. I don't want it to completely be diluted with the white. All right, so now, let's see. paint the edge that darker green but you see how I've blended that to where it kind of fades out almost like a little ombre but we only used two colors put a little more white in there we used green and white And it gave that effect. All right. So now let's do the other side. I'll move these paints. Where we actually use a lighter green and a darker green. So we'll go ahead and do our darker green. Got our rind. I got some really pretty ribbon to use on this too. So I'm excited about that. All right, so now I'm going to let me wash my brush. I'm really not washing it. I'm just putting it in some water and I'm wiping it off on a towel. And I'm gonna use this mint julep. I'm gonna come in there and put that paint down. I'm gonna take my dark green brush and start blending. And the key is you just want those paints to kind of, well, hence the word blending, meld into each other, just kind of melt into each other. You want a nice, pretty blend. Well, you're not seeing a, a definite line, just kind of blends right into the lighter color or whatever color you have that you're blending in. So that is, which you have a little bit different look obviously because we are using, um, let me wipe my paint off. I had a boo-boo, but that's the thing about baby wipes. Always keep some baby wipes around because that usually can fix that. All right, so you see how we blended, I did one with white, 
and one with the mint julep or a lighter shade of green. So the look is very similar. Um, and you can get it, just save yourself a little bit of money on the paint. So you're not having to buy a ton of different paint. Another thing to remember is you do when you're blending, see like I'm going back over and just blending it in. You wanna keep that paint fluid. That's why you have your Mr. Bottle. If you feel like the paint begins to drag, then you'll wanna spray with some water. But like I said, on that first spray, I probably got a little carried away, so you don't want it soaking wet, but you do want it to mist it lightly. All right, so here we go. I'm just putting a darker green that's not diluted with white all the way around. So it has that nice watermelon look. You know how the rind of a watermelon will be a really nice dark green with some light color in it sometimes, but they say always look for that um, light spot on a watermelon. Like if you're, if, in, <laughs> if you get tips for how to pick a good watermelon, I don't know. I think it's the luck of the draw. Okay, so I've got that done. That's my rind. Now, if you want to do a little bit more, you can take your white. So you have a little bit more of a transition and just go in there for a little bit lighter. A little bit more of a transition into your pinks and your reds. And blending is one of those things that you just want to take your time and work that paint into the look that you want. Don't be hasty, but again, you want to keep that paint fluid. All right, so I'm just going to put a little more white so it kind of blends into this next color. I can touch up this line right here when I'm done. We want to be sure we just get the main thing done. All right, so I'm going to put my green up before I dump it because I have been known to sling paint here and there. Not on purpose, but I just do. So, same thing with this. I can put some more white down and just go straight in with the red, which I guess I'll show you first. Let's get a nice line of white that is not tinted with the green. And now we will get our red. This is dangerous, putting it right on that piece, huh? And I'm going to use a little brush and kind of work that red into a pink.
So I'm just blending. So you have your pinkish color and then it starts getting darker and then you can go full on into your reds. But I am just blending, just letting those paints kind of work in together so you get that nice shading effect right in there. All right. See that nice shading? It's going from white, pink, darker pink, and then right into the red. Now, if you don't wanna do that and you want to just use your light and darker pink and then your red, you certainly can do that as well. So the same thing, you're just gonna take some light pink, we're gonna come around And you're going to take some darker pink. Now I'm using the same brush because I don't care if they kind of blend together. In fact, that's what we're doing. We're blending them. Right? So probably want a little bit more of that light pink. And then... We want to take our red. And then let's just blend this in. And I'm blending my red into the pink. I do feel my paint just starting to pull a bit. You'll feel it on your brush. So I sprayed it with a little bit of water and it's moving that paint a little bit better. All right, so see the difference? There's really not that much difference at all. So that's how you can save yourself a little bit and paint this one has one two three four five different colors and this one just has three different colors so either one is good to do so i'm going to finish this up let's get our red look i have all these brushes let's get this red right smack dab in the middle our deep dark red, nice ripe watermelon, and we'll blend out from there. Now I was just kind of going in the direction of a watermelon slice, just kind of rounding it and blending it, but Right. So I'll clean that line up in just a bit, but I think what I need to do, I can start to feel my paint pulling just a bit, so I'm going to mist it. And then I'm going to take my white and kind of blend this just a bit.
And I do need some more pink in this area. So I'm gonna pick up just a smidge of red and blend it in. See how I'm just blending? And those colors, because I've kept them wet, damp, not sopping wet, just they're blending nicely together. Right. And then I'm just going in and softening up those edges to give it a nice blended look straight into straight into that red. Isn't that pretty? It looks just like a watermelon slice. All right, so let's clean up this edge. And I think I'm going to use an angled brush to do that. Um, let's see, I got a good one right here. See, so just a little angled brush just to get in there. Since I taped off that line, that's how I did that. But I want a fairly clean line, even though I'm going to have my words over it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We want it as clean as possible. And you could have taped off that top part if you want. You want it to be crisp. But I like the artsy hand painted look. Artsy fartsy, as Stephen, my friend, calls it. All right, so this going to need to blend these colors right here. And with that, Gonna mist and I'm going to blend in that into a nice pink right in there. Let's see, little teeny bit of white. I'm just working that paint into the shade that I want. And then again, love, gotta love those wipies. They are fabulous for cleaning up stuff. We use them all the time in the studio. All right, see there? So pretty. Looks just like, oh my gosh, I hope this is filming as good as it looks because it looks just like a watermelon. All right, I'm back to my angled brush. And I'm going to get right in there. And now I'm going to take my other brush. Let me clean up my little essies. I can always touch that up. And what I do, I do want to take 
a little bit of my green. Now let's do a lighter green, just right in there. So I can do it. Right in there, we'll get just a smidge of that pink right in there. All right, so I do need to soften it up just a bit because it was kind of starting to dry. So let me get just a smidge, I mean, just a smidge of white and blend that in. You see how I'm doing that? Just blending those colors together. Perfect. Okay. So now, all right. So that was easy peasy blending 101. Nothing too fancy. Just get your feet wet in the world of blending paints. Um, these are all Dixie Belle paints, but remember when you're blending to keep your surface and your paints damp so that you're able to blend them and they can transition from darker to lighter or from whatever color to the other. So, okay, so I am letting my watermelon dry and I have this really cute hello out of wood, cut out out of wood, and I'm going to paint it. And I think I'm going to paint it white while my watermelon dries. So I thought you could join me. Well, I finish all this up. So I'm going to paint this little guy white just with some white chalk paint, some Dixie Belle. So I thought the white would just pop off that turquoise color, which I believe is mermaid's tail, but I will clarify that. I will make sure to have the right paint colors listed in the description. All right, so I'm just painting a coat of white. Now these little cutouts are so fun. They add dimension to your projects. And um, instead of stenciling, I do have a stencil. And I might even incorporate the stencil as well I'll have to see. I think my stencil says summer. So I could do the raised hello. And then I can do the stencil across the watermelon that says um, summer. I may do that. We'll see. So this is just super easy. And I'm using the color Cotton by Dixie Belle. So let's just set that aside, let it dry. Where can I put it? Since I'm done with my water bottle, set that aside. Okay, so now let's paint some seeds in there. And to do that, I'm just gonna use, you can paint seeds a couple, couple different ways, but I'm just gonna use 
a little round brush that I can get somewhat of a point. I guess this one will work. See that one? This one's a liner. It doesn't have to be a liner. But you're just gonna go in here and make little seed shapes. So if I wanna start here, do a random, almost like a teardrop. See there? So then I'm gonna go over here and do one. I'm gonna go over here and do one. My paint's still a little bit wet. I can feel it. We'll do one right here. So I'm just doing little random seeds. And you can do as many seeds as you want. Or I guess you could paint a seedless watermelon. You are the artist. You're just painting little, almost like little parentheses, but the bottom is a little bit fatter. Like a teardrop. And I'm doing them kind of offset from each other. Just like that. Make sure I don't stick my finger in a wet seed. There we go. And I'm just using black. This is the Caviar by Dixie Belle, but you can use any color black you like. You can even do this with acrylic paint. And you can blend acrylic paint using similar technique what I did to blend the Dixie Belle chalk paint. But today we are just talking about how to blend chalk paint. So I got lots of watermelon seeds. So I think that's plenty. What do y'all think? Okay, so let's move on. And let's give our little seeds a highlight. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cotton Dixie Belle and on the same side of all the seeds, I'm just going to put a little white comma would be the best way I could describe it around the bottom of that seed. So it gives it just a cute little highlight of the shape of the seed so they don't just disappear and it's like that juice of the watermelon kind of shining on the seeds. And if you don't want to put a highlight, you don't have to. If you don't want to put a highlight on every single one, you don't have to, but I am going to do that today. So it's just like a little comma. There you go. Little watermelon highlight, seed highlights. All right, now let's just finish up this beautiful blended watermelon sign. See, we've got it so pretty. It's all nice and blended. We used our technique. And now I'm going to put my hello on there. And then I'm going to put a cute bow with some pretty green. I think I'm going to put it off to the side. So while we're waiting on my glue gun to heat up, let's just make a quick little bow. So the way I'm going to do this, I mean, there's a million ways. I'm not a bow expert, but I make bows for a lot of my projects. I'm just going to make a loop, make another loop. I'm going to go back in the opposite direction and then just make loops. Now this ribbon is not 
extremely thick, but it is wired. And I find that I can always, um, well, most times I think my bows always look better when I use wired ribbon. But this isn't extremely thick, so I'm going to do several loops. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, five on each side. And I think that's probably good. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut it off right there. Ooh, these scissors are dull. And then I'm going to cut, I'm not letting go. I've still got it all pinched up. I'm going to cut piece off and I'm going to got it all pinched together I'm gonna just wrap it around there and tie it and then tie it again now when I make these then I'm gonna fluff it after that when I make these bows a lot of times um, when I'm putting them on door hangers, I will actually staple this down onto my door hanger. So today we might just initially glue since I don't have my staple gun handy, but a lot of times I like to staple them down. It gives seems to give it a little more body to the bow and it secures it I think better so I'm just cutting the little ends Whoop, there you go dovetail ends I guess is what that's called and then make sure that this little guy this was my extra I'm gonna cut it close so you don't really see it so it can kind of tuck behind there and then in just a second we'll, we'll glue that cute bow on okay but right now we're going to glue our hello i see my glue gun is ready i've painted my hello white and i'm just gonna put a little glue here a little glue there on each side okay and then oh I can smell it and I'm just gonna place it I kind of wanted it to be off kind of at an angle so I could put my bow on off to the side so there we go so cute that's so cute. All right, so that's down. And now I'm just gonna glue my little bow right here for now, but I think I will go back in and staple it a little bit later. Get my staple gun out. I love this green. I think I actually, believe it or not, Got this ribbon from Sam's. And then I'm just arranging my ribbon. So see, there you go. Is that not so cute? So then what I'll do to finish this off is I'll put a rope to hang it. And there we are, so cute. So that is your 101 in blending Dixie Bell paint. Okay, so I said we were done, but then after I looked at my little sign, I thought, well, it really does need that stencil. So I cut the stencil using our silhouette, and it just says the word summer. Now, in order to get a nice, clean stencil, a lot, one trick that we'll do in the studio is we will put a clear coat now you can use flat or satin but we just put a little clear coat and that forms a barrier around the edges to keep that paint from bleeding that's one of the main things i hear about people having trouble with stenciling 
is they have um, bleed through. So that's that paint getting up under the stencil. Now you can do a couple of different things. You can use the paint, the base color for your little um, first coat, or you can use a clear coat of some kind, um, preferably a flat, but you can also use a satin, which I think is what I'm using right now because that was what was right nearby. So I'm just doing a quick little coat and we'll give it a second to dry. And that's creating a little seal around the edges. And this typically dries pretty fast, but this is just a little trick we use when people come into the studio to do a project and they don't do a lot of stenciling and it keeps them from having to have that bleed through. So that's that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up my white paint. I think I'm still gonna do, although a yellow might be fun. Let's see what I've got. I think I'm just going to do white. Kind of keep it in that color family. All right. Now this should dry pretty fast. Okay, now it's dry. So I'm going to take my white paint and I'm going to use very little amount of paint. We don't want a lot of paint. And I'm just going to dab that paint on my part of my letters that is cut out. Now with this white, I'm probably going to have to do a couple of coats. So by the time I've gotten to the R, I can probably go back and do another coat on the S because it will have chalk paint dries very fast.
Okay, so I actually ended up going back and doing a third coat because the white on top of the red, it needed that extra coat to cover. Okay, so now for the big reveal. Put a little. All right, guys, this is always my favorite part. There we go. It looks so good. So the only thing that I need to do is to get that little center of that R out. So let me see what I can find to grab that little guy. All right. Perfect. Here we are. I think it needed that summer. What do you guys think? I love it. All right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, learning how to blend a little paint today and make something really cute for the front door.